morning, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you to the 100,241 of you guys, as well as you ladies and you kids that have been subscribed to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Because, of course, without all of you, we wouldn't be at 100,000 plus subscribers. And I say without all of you, because this is not just me. This is about all of us together. And I want to say thank you so much. But I realized I screwed the pooch. I did. I pulled the Dallas Cowboys. I did 90% right, but I didn't finish that last 10%. If you don't know what I mean was, you know, we were at uh, this time yesterday morning at about 99,200. And I've been gaining like a thousand subscribers a day and it was great. And I figured, okay, yesterday I figured it was going to be the day or sometime in the middle of the night. So we started our Friday night live stream like we always do. And um, we started at 9 o'clock, and we had some of y'all playing. You know, some of y'all would subscribe and unsubscribe, subscribe, unsubscribe, and so on. So the number would kind of fluctuate. Um, we started out with 450 to go. By 3 o'clock in the morning, we still had 350 people to go. And shout out to Leo. Leo, a.k.a. Scarface, okay, who uh, was baked he was baked he was literally like this most of the time shout out to like thomas garrett and wade wade went to the club left the club thought about going to the jones's house and stuff because he went past that neighborhood he's like yeah and we're like don't go shit on the lawn because we might not see you again okay um we ended up having uh michael uh martinez was in here um um, I get, but, but we had a lot of people in here. Forgive me if I can't remember everybody. But my system crashed at 3 o'clock, and we were about 350 away. And I said, you know what? At this rate, it's not going to happen until sometime in the middle of the day. And I woke up at 6.30, and I looked at my uh, YouTube statistics, and boom, 100,000. I was like, damn. My wife jumps in, what, 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 what? I said, I hit 100,000. She said, well, congratulations. I said, yeah, but I didn't capture it. So I messed up. I should have stayed up and put in the work to see that number change. And I can't ever go back and change it. I can't do anything about it. That moment is gone. And here's the thing that we have to look at. There's... Nothing that you can do about what happened 10 years ago, a year ago, a month ago, hell, 10 seconds ago. You can only deal with this moment and going forward. I can't go back to that 100,000. I just can't. I am so happy I got there. Maybe I'll be around for a million. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It took... 12 years from when I had my first YouTube video. So I ain't going to be around that long. Be that as it may, it's the same thing about the Cowboys. We can't do anything about those 29 years before. We can only deal with this going forward. Now, the thing that's funny to me is the talking heads are talking up, you know, all the players the Cowboys have lost and, you know, they're not signing anybody and so on. It's funny because most of the players that we've lost haven't been like we've lost in the past. I want you to think back to 2021 when we traded away Amari Cooper. Okay, best wide receiver we had on the team. We let Cedric Wilson, our third best wide receiver, go to Miami. We screwed the pooch on... Um, Randy Gregory's contract. Lyle Collins went. 
Connor Williams went. I ask you, are the players that we've lost thus far like that? Now, you can argue Tyron Smith going. And how are we going to make it without Tyron Smith? I'm going to say that the last time we got 16 games out of Tyron Smith was 2015. Not a single year of Dak Prescott's career has Tyron Smith played all of the games. In fact, over the last four years, Tyron Smith has averaged seven and a half games per season. Now, we got this year was great, 13 games, and maybe he becomes Trent Williams with the Jets and doesn't get injured. You don't know. But truth be told, when you can sign him for a contract that is $20 million incentive latent, you want him to reach those targets. Because, see, here's the thing that the Cowboys are doing at the moment. And one of the reasons why maybe you don't sign a big name free agent. When you think about Dante Fowler signing for $15 million, woohoo! that's got to be at least a fourth. It's got to be a fourth. Tyron Smith, that might be a fourth. The Cowboys may max out in compensatory picks this year. Max out. I think that's four picks that you can get. Or is it five? I, I can't I have to check and see. But the Cowboys are in line to be able to, for those that are saying we're all in. It doesn't mean it's all in for this year. Maybe it's all in for next year that they're getting themselves in shape to go ahead and say, we're going to turn over the roster. We're going to have the draft picks. We'll have a new coach and so all that. that. That is a possibility. That is a possibility. But here's the thing in my mind. When you start thinking about Tyron Smith at $20 million and you think about um, Dorrance Armstrong for $15 million and you think about Tony Pollard for $8 million. Guys, that's a hell of a lot of money to pay for those guys. And I don't want to sound like Stephen Jones and say that, you know, you can't overpay in free agency. Here's the fact of the matter. You've got a really good secondary, a really good secondary. You have a defensive quarterback in Micah Parsons that needs help. You now have a linebacker who understands the philosophy that the new defensive coordinator that's there. You still have a run stopper in Demarcus Lawrence. You have a guy that maybe gets coached up better in the system in Sam Williams. What you need now to really take care of this defense is you get a couple of really good defensive linemen, really good run stoppers. And see, this is where I was having a discussion with my buddy. Um, Game time. If you get that back in, you know, if Diggs is healthy and you bring back Gilmore, they're going to be able to cover people and be able to give more time to the defensive line. You get run stoppers that require double teams in the middle that keep the linebackers clean. That defense will do a lot of damage. The problem with our defense before was it was one-dimensional as pass rushers. We did not have the pieces to stop the run. We were too light in the ass. And that's what the Cowboys are trying to correct now. Tyron Smith, four years ago, we got two games out of him. Two years ago, we got four games out of him. And we had to survive without Tyron Smith. It's not the first time. If you can get one really good piece, I don't care if it's an offensive lineman, I don't care if it's a running back, it's too late for running back, or if it's defensive lineman, with the compensatory picks that we have, with the money that you will get later, there are still a lot of things that you can do. Last year, you have to say the Cowboys trading for Stephon Gilmore and Brandon Cooks only giving up fifth-round draft picks were as good as any free agent signing out there. Baltimore Ravens paid $15 million for Odell Beckham Jr. last year. $15 million. 
They released him. Took a cap hit. He had 120 yards less than Brandon Cooks. Now, you may not like what they're doing. You may say they don't care about winning. But in reality, they're trying to go ahead and say, we need to move on from some of these players. And the funny thing is, is I've been hearing for years from all the fans saying, man, get rid of Tyron Smith. Get rid of Tyron Smith. And, and they do. And now it's, oh, my God, I can't believe, man, what are we going to do? We ain't got, it's like, wait a minute. Pick a side. Pick a side. Don't just be a whiny little bitch about everything and never satisfied about anything. Okay? If the Cowboys take a first-round pick, here's the great thing for the Cowboys. With Tyler Smith being one of the best guards in football, with Tyler Smith being one of the best guards in football who can play tackle, if they decide they're going to go on the offensive line, they can go left tackle, guard, or center. Any of those places and take the best player available. If they get a stud offensive lineman to replace Bot Biotish or a guard that can play good and you put Tyler out there, the offensive line is better. If they take one of their picks and they get – a great running back behind a great offensive line, you've now fixed two of your your weaknesses right there. So we're really not that far away from what we need to do. We can't change what happened before. But at the moment, I feel like, and maybe I'm just the, the village idiot. Right now, I'm probably the only one that's out here that, that is saying something different than everybody else because everybody else is killing the Cowboys. Um, but I actually believe that maybe... Just maybe there's something different. Let's listen in on Get Up, what they have to say. Of, of attracting and acquiring a lot of talent. The teams that are good and have drafted well, pay the guys you got. If you're out in this free agent frenzy paying big bucks for players, that suggests that you haven't done as good a job. And they can't spend a lot of money on these players because they do have a lot of good players that they need to pay and they can't tie up their money in uh, free agents. Understood. Which brings me to a couple of questions. The first one, Dan, is for you. There is a perception out there, and I, I think I am one of the people who hold it, but I will defer to your expertise. Is the Dak Prescott contract looming over them, hamstringing what the Cowboys are able to do? Look, if you have a $59.5 million cap charge assigned to one player, it has to, right? Like, you're working around that no matter what. The Cowboys would tell you, well, he's the quarterback, right? Like, if you're going to lay it out. So, so they, they either have to extend him or get comfortable with the idea of working around that number. And so far, they haven't been able to extend him, and we'll see what happens there. But I don't think I, I don't think it, I think it would be foolish to say that that's not a factor. I mean, you know, they, they have a budget assigned for free agency that that might conceivably be larger if their quarterbacks cap hit weren't the highest in the league. I think it's a factor, but we have to acknowledge that we all warned them about this years ago when yeah. they were franchising yes. Dak and franchising Dak hey. and messing around with his contract. I think this 